The difference between this and a normal off-the-shelf shock is it honestly makes the car last longer because typically all your shocks you see are on the bottom. In the off-road world, the shock body is always to the top of the car. The reason for that on normal shocks is because driving in things with kings, you get a little spoiled and, oh, well, everything feels like crap now. It really makes that much difference. I mean, just look at the, look at the size here, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, carry one of those. <laughs> Jeez, man. This thing's almost taller than I am. Oh, man, Brandon, what did you do? I guess I can't add shock builder to my resume. Whether it's off-road or on-road, I think we're kind of after the same goal. You know, we, yeah, we want high want performance and, and haul ass and yeah. let's have fun and, and keep it safe, you know? So, yeah, this is awesome. What's going on, guys? It's Brandon over at Old Anvil Speed Shop. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard kind of the buzz surrounding uh, the fact that we are using a set of King shocks on our 62 Impala project for SEMA this year. Um, originally, when Paul and I were talking about the car, going over everything, um, we kind of got to a point where we realized that everything on this car is over the top. It's got a Nelson racing engine. It's got a full custom chassis and suspension. We're tucking 24s in the rear, and you know we're doing all these things to make this car as best as we possibly can. And we got to the shock department and weren't really sure what route to go. So I reached out to a buddy of mine, Fabian, over at King Shocks and made a phone call and said, hey, this is what we're doing for SEMA this year. Are you guys interested? Is there something we could do, something we could do that's over the top that nobody really has ever done before? And uh, he ran it up the ladder over there. And a couple weeks later, he got back to me and said, we're on board, let's do this thing. So. At this point, um, we've got a set of mock-up bodies that they gave us uh, just to get our upper and lower shock mounts made in the front and the rear. And today, we're actually gonna head down there and get the final ones all sorted out and finished up. So we're gonna take you along for the ride and show you the process. So we just got down here to the King Shock facility in Garden Grove. Uh, we're here with my buddy Fabian. Uh, we're gonna take you on inside, check out the shop, and we're gonna get some shocks built and take you through that. Let's go check it out. Show you guys all the wizardry. Every single little skim you can change, you can custom tune. So like on an airbag car, because the spring rate change, it fluctuates as the car goes through its cycle. Typically they need a little more rebound valving than a standard spring wood because of the change in the spring rate. And these, these are just to get the right length and dimensions you want. If somebody wants a seven inch stroke, this is an eight inch stroke standard shock, but you can just put internal spacer in it and it'll only limit the travel to seven inches. So critical, even these little washers, they go a certain way because it'll affect the way the dampening works and see how it's got a flat edge. You want it to have that radius yep. towards that valving side. We can build any dimension you want, length, how short do you want it, anything. Yeah, how much you can dial these in to me is amazing because, I mean, we're, we're coming from a world where, you know, we've, we've got very minimal adjustment in our shocks and especially on an air ride car, you know, you get a lot of these cars that feel real bouncy or, you know, yeah, things like really that. Loose. So they... having all this adjustment, I think, is, is wonderful because it will get us exactly what we want in terms of ride quality, ride quality and just the feel when you're driving yeah. it, yeah. Because you can, it's really easy to make a car real stiff and corner really nice, but to make it corner nice and ride good is another thing. Yeah. With this, you can achieve good cornering. You can go over dip without worrying about bottoming it out or the car getting out of control on the freeway, feeling like you're gonna crash it. You can really dial in the stability, the drivability. Which is really awesome. I, I think uh, with the quality of the car, everything that's being done, all the other parts that are on it, just that, that high level build, I think this is gonna do the car justice. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think this will uh, definitely take it into another bracket as far as the, the drivability and performance aspect. Oh yeah, you can even fine tune traction on these things. You can yeah. stiffen them up, loosen them, get more rebound, get the wheels to stay down longer. You can get, it, it honestly makes the car last longer because the shocks are working properly, the suspension cycles properly. 
you get less wear on your heim joints, less wear on your everything, your tie rods, because it, it, you get less deflection, you get really, really smooth articulation of all the suspension, it, it really helps everything. So, say you're driving this car once we get this thing finished and you decide that it needs a little bit more adjustment than what these knobs are going to give you, how long is it going to take you to tear down a set of shocks, make those adjustments, and put them back together? It takes 30 minutes. Wow. The longest part probably is just almost getting them off so the car. I was going to say it takes yeah, longer to take them off than the it does car. to yeah, actually exactly. adjust them. So you have wiper cap, which wipes all the dust off of there. Seal cap, which has the main seal in there, which keeps all the oil from gushing out. And these you can run any which way, upside down, sideways, doesn't matter. Yeah, I've seen a couple people say that you can't run them upside down, so that's uh, that's not true. That is not true. <laughs> you can run them any which way you want. With that little piston in there on the back side of it goes the nitrogen, and on the other side, the rest of the oil. So when you have a dividing piston, it decreases cavitation, and you get a much better ride, more stability out of it. And you can also fine tune with nitrogen pressures. Now, for our particular application, do you have like a general baseline of internally what how it needs to be set up? Yeah. I started out a little soft just because I wanted to ride good off the jump and then slowly as the owner of the car drives it, he can start to nitpick how he wants it to drive. He might want it to be stiffer or even more loose. Now, as far as the shocks themselves go, do you guys have like a recommended like service kind of schedule, like a general feel? Do you start it's to feel kind a of a general or? feel, but also a big thing on like a race car application, it has to do with heat cycle. Okay. So in one race, these cars will sit, when the shocks get hot, they're running 350, 450 degrees wow. at, for hours. You can imagine what that does to a shock seal. Oh, yeah. And, uh, they start to flatten out. It's it's recommended that, I mean, it's based on feel, but on something like this on the street, we've had guys go 40,000 miles and wow. they still don't need a rebuild, but you should probably rebuild them just Just to freshen them up and yeah. Just, just maintenance. Um, but they go a really long time. The only thing, the most important thing to check is your nitrogen pressure. As long as they got nitrogen and they're not getting super hot or anything, you're a street queen, they'll last you a lifetime, realistically, as long as they don't. Yeah, so you could, yeah. you essentially could rebuild these a hundred times yeah. if you wanted to. You can change the colors. If he doesn't like the blue and zinc plate, he can make them black on black, gold on black, or realistically Re really any, any color, color you, you want. want. And Cerakote the bodies. We've had people do titanium nitride on the shafts, you know, the diamond-like coatings. Now, one cool thing I did want to mention, too, is that you guys do all your own machining in-house, which is Everything super is all cool. all done in-house. All the machine work, the only thing we outsource really is little parts like bearings and cert clips, uh, fitting, hoses, I mean, but I would say probably like at least 90% of our stuff is all made in-house. Yeah, that's awesome. All made in the USA like it should be. And, and it allows you guys to keep the quality top notch, which yeah. from everything I've seen, especially walking through the, the shop and kind of touring the shop and checking everything out, everything is top notch. There, there is no expense spared on these things. And just the, 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 the overall quality is just beyond me. It's amazing to see. I mean, you get what you pay for when it comes to buying stuff. I mean, buy once, cry once. And but the smile it puts on your face after you're riding it and you're like, oh my God, I love this thing. It's all worth it, you know? And so now that you've kind of got these together, what is the next step? The next step would be finalizing, tightening these up, making sure everything's in place like it should be. A couple of set screws, we'll put them all together. We'll oil them. We even have our own oil. Yeah, I saw that. Because yeah, that's, we can. that's super cool. The difference between this and a normal off-the-shelf shock is that off-the-shelf shock is just kind of a general idea of what, oh, uh, it might work for everybody, but somebody could put it on their car and say, I hate how this drives, but it's all they, I could get, which we, as a shock manufacturer, we can make custom length, we can make everything, and then also tailor the ride to how you want your car to ride. It's not just an off-the-shelf thing. 
yeah, it's a little bit of more expensive than your standard off the wall shock, but if you look at it, that is not your off the wall shock. That there's like, it speaks for itself, the quality and the machine work. A lot of other shocks look nice. They're, I mean, for the average person, it's, it's, I'm sure they're more than sufficient, but there's always that next level of wanting more. And this is the next level. Yeah, and I, I would say too, the, the level of stuff that we're doing, the level of stuff that you guys do in the off-road industry, it, it needs that next level. It needs that, that extra adjustability, the extra serviceability, yeah. you know, all those things come into play. So for a lot of these guys, you know, spending a little bit of extra money and getting that out of it is well worth it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Some of these guys run their trucks, they've had the same set of shocks on their trucks for 10 years. And these are trucks that are doing 100 and 15, 120 miles an hour through big San Felipe whoops and they just keep going. They keep charging. Yeah, they, and how many races a year are these guys doing too, you know? Yeah, some of these so, guys do six races a year, minimum 300 miles. Yeah. So long ones at a thousand miles. Yeah, Even they're getting ones, used yeah. and abused yeah. and beat on and yeah. All of that same big trophy truck technology is in the This is what started it. This is and it's only grown, so these, at some point, who knows how big of a shock a hot rod will have, and probably who doesn't need anything very big, but because you can, you can always yeah. go bigger. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think this opens a lot of doors too, uh, not only for us, but for you guys into the hot rod world and, and uh, really trying to, uh, in a way, kind of take over a market that, you know, everything that's out there works, but you know, let's take it to the next level and let's let's give these guys that are spending all this money on these really, really high-end cars, you know, let, let's give them the performance in the shock side of it that they want and that these cars need, really. Yeah. For the general public, like some kid in his garage building his own car, yeah, just go buy whatever's on the shelf and it'll help you, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's not to say that any of those are bad either. Um, I think a lot of them serve their purpose and I think they do a great job, but. Yeah, but it's just the next it's, level. It's this, taking this it to the next level, This is another level of a high performance shock on a high performance vehicle that can do, it's got 1200 horsepower and it needs a good shock to be able to drive it properly and get all you can get out of it. Yeah. I can send you some clips too of a couple of trucks that we tested in the dirt so they can like just clip them in and maybe just trophy trucks running through and. guys aren't very familiar with off-road stuff but yeah this has been super eye-opening for me and I think it's been very eye-opening for Paul as well just to uh, to really like be able to take one of these apart and see all the different parts and pieces and components and everything going on and and having you kind of explain how everything works is uh, I've learned a lot I think he's learned a lot uh, it's just really interesting on these shocks as well we're able to cater to just about everybody's fitment as far as routing a reservoir Piggybacks, I think, are always the best just because you can save a lot of space and if you can fit it in there, this is your shock. It's compact, it fits right in there. It, but on some cases, like on the front of a car because you got such a big wheel and turning in. Yeah, I know we were kind of limited on space up front, so. A shock sitting like this, that tire might hit the reservoir or something. But we're more than capable of putting a hose on here and putting the reservoirs wherever you would like. You can put them up in the fender well, underneath the car, hide them away. Um, we can put them anywhere you want, really. Yeah, so for uh, for our 62, we're actually gonna stick them in the engine compartment on the inside of the inner fenders, and we're kinda gonna show them off. So uh, not only does it make it easier in terms of adjustment, you could just pop the hood, reach in there and adjust, but uh, kinda gives it a cool look in the engine compartment as well. Yeah, that's a little, little bling bling in the engine compartment. Not that that Kong Performance blower doesn't have enough bling bling, but that just adds a little extra. Just adds a little extra <laughs> eye candy in there. How are those bumpers coming along? They're moving along. Uh, we have the front one almost done. Uh, we've got some finish work to do on it, and then uh, on the rear, I'm starting to shape corners right now. So Paul 
kind of have the general shape together. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm working on getting everything fit back there. And then uh, at some point, uh, either later today or tomorrow, I'll have to bring Paul back in and have him uh, help me finish up those corners. He's kind of the whiz when it comes to that that kind of stuff. You I know, was I'm watching that thing. That thing looked crazy. Okay. Yeah. Dude, he just chops up some aluminum and there's a bumper now. It's pretty remarkable. Got our so. special King Blue fluid. King Blue shock oil. This application probably doesn't need something like this. This is our custom race car stuff. But because we can, why not? A little bit of extra secret sauce. We cycle that piston in there and you'll see it burp up all those bubbles. So we do that a few times just to get all the air out of it. Make sure there's no air pockets, bubbles. So it's any good. air pockets at all, you'll feel it. Oh yeah, in the, yeah. the shock won't work properly. So it's like number one thing is making sure the shocks are bled properly. Sometimes there is an occasion where a piston, will, a reservoir piston will wear down and nitrogen will escape past the O-ring and into the shock and then it's just, it's a bad day after that. It cavitates, it doesn't work anymore. It's a bad day. And then they make a mess when you go to take them apart. <laughs> it's awful. But very rarely do we ever see that. If you get it set up to right to where it's got enough compression to where it doesn't bottom out, but it doesn't feel harsh, that's like where you want to be. You start driving in things with Kings, you get a little spoiled and you're like, oh man, this car rides like crap. Oh, this car could use some more of this. This car could use some more of that. Oh. That's a little harsh. Oh, I don't like that. And then you're like, oh, well, everything feels like crap now because you're so accustomed to driving on a car with really good shocks on it. And it, it really makes that much difference. Now these are just seals? So those are Teflon wear bands. Gotcha. So that's what keeps the shaft in place here. So you don't go metal on metal. The tolerances are all really tight, so these right here and it's also critical you got to bleed these when you put these in you'll see right now as I go in it'll start to push oil through those three little bleed ports so you also want to push in those you want to try and bleed as much as much air that you can get out of them so and then there kind of is an oil fill level yeah I was just about to ask you just kind of eyeball uh, it or is there I mean we kind of fill it to where the top out washer here is right in line with that snap ring groove. So that's kind of your fill point. You kind of slide this in there. And then when shock oil starts to bleed out of there, that's how you know the shock's 100% full. Oh, that's a sealed shock right there. And then for extra precaution, cause you don't want any leaks or anything. Always want to blow these out just to make sure you don't get any residue leaking. These are for concrete motorsports. Those are, we had to go to such a big reservoir here because at the San Felipe 250 this year, they, uh, they cooked their shocks. That's how hot they got. These little sliders, they melted, everything melted onto the shock. Jeez, man. So it just goes to show how hot they get when they're in a race. So with these, you get a lot more oil capacity in here, which also increases, you don't get shock fade. So okay. in the off-road world, you do see a thing called shock fade occasionally, but we've gotten it to be pretty minimal now with our big reservoirs with diffusers and uh, our blue shock oil helps a lot too. So that's a high temp awesome. oil. That's a billet dash 16 fitting on there, all made in there. That is insane, man. And those things are heavy and they're sharp. I mean, just look at look at the size here, man. <laughs> yeah. Same, same, but different. Yeah, that is incredible. You want to do the other one, Brandon? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's pretty easy. Another way to know they're properly oiled and not under oiled is they go all the way out and you feel it top out. So if you let the nitrogen or the air out, you can press it. Just put your hand on the shock. Oh, 
Oh yeah. You can feel when it tops yeah. out. Yep. Just fill her up. We'll wrap a rag around it. Go ahead, running. So you're good here. So just you're good there. So just all the way it. out. Not all the way out, but just almost to where it's like where my finger is right there. So you see the lip right there. Yeah. That's where you want to stop right there. Okay, and then just slowly come back slowly up. Slowly push it back in. You can go with a little more force, but you'll feel oh, yeah. those air bubbles pop right on out. So now pull it back, and then we'll close the compression adjuster. So we're... Yeah, twist in. On these, with the compression adjuster, you can feel from three to five turns, every little click, you can feel a difference in the shock. Valving covers these ports here, and in there, there's a little cup that closes off an orifice and it forces fluid to go through these ports which hits the valve and that increases your dampening force these don't affect rebound so they have little check valves in there so you get free flow your rebound stays how it is so a lot of people ask if these have rebound adjustment and they don't we only have compression adjustment unless you have a bypass which controls both flows externally Cool. Snap these in there. We want to make sure those are lined up. Really simple. And then as you push this down, you want to hold this because if you just push this, it'll, start it, to... it'll push, it'll displace the piston. So you just want to see those little bubbles broken out of the piston. You just want to do that a couple times. Kind of getting that last bit of Get air. Get that out. last little bit of air, but you got to be careful too because if you push too hard, then it goes it comes out of the bleed holes really fast and it'll make a mess push on this right here there you go keep going keep going right there you go make sure it's all nice and clean doesn't have any residue so does this mean i can add shock builder to my resume basically that's that's <laughs> a training right there shock builder master fabricator heat metal pounder man Ew. Goes all the way down. Does it come all the way back up? Uh oh. Uh oh, Brandon. Oh man, Brandon, what did you do? I guess I can't add shock builder to my resume. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes with seals in there, they need a little heat to get warmed up and they get caught. So. Tapped out. He's good to go. Six so I didn't mess anything up. No, I didn't mess <laughs> anything up. Sometimes they're a little sticky or sometimes, because this is just regular air pressure, you only get 30 pounds in there and it's not enough. Not the same as nitrogen, yeah. Yeah, so typically we run them at 150 pounds. Two freshly finished Impala shots. Awesome. First of their kind. You want them on now? Yeah. We have these custom engraved. So normally these would be the opposite way because the standard shot goes mounted right side up to us. Um, but these are upside for, down. For fitment issues, yeah, we yeah. had to run it the other way. Yes. Which we did confirm doesn't mess anything up. Doesn't mess anything up. You can run them upside down, sideways, backwards. Even though in the normal shock world or on a car, Typically all your shocks you see are on the bottom. The body, the shock body is on the bottom. In the off-road world, the shock body is always to the top of the car, which might seem a little odd to most people that come from the regular car world. Like race cars. Yeah, like race that. cars, it's always like a strut style. Yeah. The shock body itself is on the bottom. So the reason for that on normal shocks is because of the way the oil is in the shock. The oil has to be at the bottom in order for the shock to properly function. But on these, since these are filled and these have a reservoir, you can now mount them any which way you want because it always has oil in it. If you put a regular shock with the body to the top, it wouldn't work properly because now all that oil is in the bottom and the piston in there is just traveling through air. So you get no dampening force. But with these, you always have dampening force no matter which way you put them because it's constantly submerged in oil and it always has nitrogen in it to keep it from cavitating and keeps it all in place. 
So that's another difference from these to your standard shock off the wall. Try and get them exactly the same. I mean, to add to what the difference from these shocks and any standard shock off the shelf is we make different diameter of the shock. This is a 2.0, which is a small shock to us, but a big shock on a regular car. Um, we go from a 2.0 all the way up to a 4.5, and that's uh, behemoth. And you held this up next to, this is a 3.0 shock. And that looks tiny. And these are four and a half inch reservoirs off of a, for a, a big four and a half inch bypass on these. So the size of the reservoir is bigger than the shock itself. Just out of total curiosity on, on a set of shocks like that, I mean, what, what does something like that weigh? I don't know, probably like 80 pounds. Wow. 18 inch stroke bypass like you got over here. That thing takes almost two gallons of oil and it, it gets really heavy really fast. You know what I mean? Carry one of those. Carry one of those. <laughs> Jeez, man. That is incredible. At full extension, like if we shot it with nitrogen or air right now, just to see how long they are. Man, this thing's almost taller than I am. So this is a four and a half by 18 inch stroke. This trophy truck probably gets about 36 inches of wheel travel off of a. That's one heck of a lot more than yeah. we'll ever see on this car. <laughs> There's a lot of adjustability in this. Yeah, I think uh, whether it's off-road or on-road, I think we're kind of kind of after the same goal. You know, we, yeah, we want high performance fast, and, high and haul performance, ass and yeah. let's have fun and, and keep it safe, you know? So, yeah, yeah this is awesome. Uh, you guys should check out that truck. Too. Yeah, hell yeah. So that was a guy called uh, Larry Raglan. Lightning Larry Raglan. It's a freaking... Yeah, dude, this thing is sweet. So this was when Chevy was tra competing with, like, the Rough Riders, the Fords team. This is uh, the old-school heartbeat of America livery that they had. It's freaking cool. Yeah, I was going to say, this got to be, what, late 90s, early 2000s? This was built in 94. Wow. Yeah, this is 1994. This thing has won the Baja, I think, five times. So this had... King Shocks, before they were King Shocks, they had Custers on it yeah, at I was gonna say, the time. Yeah. And now it's got a full update with King Coilovers and All the newest bypasses. of the new. And yeah. then they're still running this truck, right? So it just ran its last race. Oh, you, yeah. you look at how many times this thing's been used and how many, how many times you, you've hammered a knockoff off with that. That is cool. And this was all laid out by hand on a table, no computers, just cut, Dude, that notch, is just so much work. Stick it in. It's crazy to think back in the day, you know, like there's a lot of time into, you know, these these trophy trucks and these classic cars and stuff now. But back then, I mean, it it was even more work, you know, everything was done by hand. Now we can we can draw everything up in CAD and send it out, have it laser cut and click it together and weld it up and yeah. you know and 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 guys will complain about that taking too long. You know, it's like, <laughs> well how many hours you got into this thing? Look at how complex that steering is. It has a V-drive to go to the steering box back <laughs> down here. And then it's got a swinger to push and pull the arm and then steer it down there. This had to have been like one of the first of like, it's like, you know. Oh, this was the truck. Yeah, like. So there was another one. There was a couple before. They were class eight. But this is like the first tube chassis. One of the first this tube thing chassis is insane. trophy trucks. So that livery is the same livery it's had for its entire whatever. life. Yeah. yeah. No navigation screens in this one because it's back when men were men and knew how to navigate terrain. <laughs> I feel like a little kid. This is so cool. Yeah, dude. This is so sick. Super cool. The 6 2 of all 6 2s. Yeah. Best shocks on the planet. Mm. What more could you want? All righty, so we just wrapped up our two rear shocks with the piggyback reservoirs. Uh, we've got the two fronts to go, and uh, we're gonna get out of your hair. I think we took up a little more of your time than we probably needed to, uh, but I appreciate you showing us. I know uh, Paul does as well, and uh, we're super stoked to have you guys on board, and we're looking forward to getting this car done and seeing what it can do. So, Hell thanks, yeah. buddy. Can't wait to see it.